Welcome to another episode of the magazine. Today we have with us Representative Bill Strauss and Jerry Rooney. Jerry Rooney is the president of the Whitfield Manjuro Friendship Society. And so we're going to talk today about a little bit of a follow-up to a story that we had earlier in the, in, the, in the shows. So today we're talking about the follow-up to the Carriage House. So could you give us some history of the Carriage House and some of the updates? Sure. Uh, well, thanks to uh, Dr. Hinohara, the Japanese doctor who raised the funds to buy and renovate this place, uh, 11 years ago we had the dedication. However, they had run out of funds to do the Carriage House at the same time. And so for the last 11 years, we've been trying to work on that, which is uh, coming along now finally uh, with the help of many, many different sources. Uh, we had a, uh, a family trust fund from a family that had old barns in the old days and just loved the idea and gave us a $20,000 start right away. Uh, and that was very nice. We've had uh, CPA funds from the town, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we've had a huge amount of funds, thank you, to uh, Bill uh, Strauss here on my right, uh, because of the earmarks of the state. And uh, those goes directly into uh, working with us and bringing that up to date. So uh, right now, it's making significant progress. Okay. Uh, and we've been able to satisfy even the, uh, the historic society in terms of the exterior and so forth like that. So those challenges are coming along, and we appreciate all the help, especially from our good representative here. So it does. It does help to have... Uh, uh, a figurehead who is with the passion to make sure this gets done. So, Representative Strauss, tell us how uh, you achieved that. Sure. So, uh, obviously, uh, the the legacy of the Friendship Society and the, the Manjiro House has is, is always been uh, an important part of the history uh, locally to me and a, a, an important extension of the, the heritage, the ocean-going heritage of New Bedford and whaling, uh, that we have this uh, amazing uh, uh, historical account locally of a important individual and a, a critical to the connection that ultimately occurred uh, between the United States and, and Japan. And exactly. it's been fostered here uh, by the Friendship Society, and, and the house is uh, uh, emblematic of that. But once, uh, you know, every, every thing cries out for attention. So it's not easy, <laughs> as Jerry knows, to, and lives, uh, to run uh, something like this. So Jerry, of course, approached me, a couple of his board members, a few years ago, and said, look, it, it, you know, sometimes just a little bit of money can make a big difference. And so what I've been able to do the last few years and uh, I think we'll be successful in the fiscal year that just started uh, last week, fiscal year 23, is get uh, another state earmark of appropriations, around $25,000, to be used by the, uh, by the House for uh, critical projects uh, like mm -hmm. this. It doesn't come with uh, specific requirements as to what it gets used for, other than they use it for uh, for the, the projects that need to be done. And, and so it's so typical to me, in a good way, of uh, how projects like this occur and how I get to do my job, which is <laughs> local people reach out uh, with their ideas. Uh, I don't think of everything. Right. I'm right. there to be the advocate and uh, be the, the means by which uh, great ideas locally. I mean, other things happening in town. We all know what's going on with pickleball and things sure. like that. Yeah. That's because local people who care about the town uh, over the years have, have uh, reached out and said, what about this, what about that? And so it's exciting for me to have a role in, in, in making these happen. And, and this earmark for, for, the, for the Manjiro House is, is part of that process. So by Jerry Rooney reaching out to you and members of the board, yep. uh, you were able to find a resource that was out there in our state government. Right, and, and obviously we have tourist-related accounts, and, and it's always been amazing to me how uh, high this ranks, this property we're in today, uh, for visitors from Japan. So mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be a, a visitor uh, only going to the major cities like Boston. You can come to an amazing town like this on the ca on the coast, and 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 learn about a rich part of both countries' history. Mm -hmm. And even during COVID, we've had 
um, visitors come. That's true. I, I uh, today uh, as I opened my uh, computer, I got a recommend or a, a request by people from out of town that wanted to come and uh, not only do. Uh, the visit to the, uh, the house itself, which is our museum, but also do the Manjaro Trail, which includes eight places around that were pertinent to Manjaro in his time here, including the first school he ever went to, the Bartlett Academy mm -hmm. where he learned navigation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, the uh, we are very interested. We get about we've had about twelve thousand visitors here uh, since we opened eleven years ago, mm -hmm. and roughly seventy to seventy-two percent are Japanese people. Uh, we've had them from every continent, except Antarctica. We're waiting for a polar bear to come here pretty soon. <laughs> but in any event, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, about 12,000, about 72% of Japanese, many living in the USA and others coming from Japan. So uh, uh, and the thing is, we, are, uh, uh, we want to spread the news, as uh, Bill does very well, in terms of the importance of this place for the first Japanese person to ever live in the USA, right in this house. Yes. And yes. so we've been teaching local teachers for the last 11 years. We've taught from Rhode Island uh, down to the Cape, uh, teachers from high school, etc. But we are limited in that because we have to do it in our own conference room, which means we can only take maybe eight people at a time. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there, therefore, the cultural center is what we're aiming for, obviously, and in there we'll have two classrooms that can be combined or separated. And so we'll have uh, all kinds of, we talk about the youngsters, they talk about manga mm -hmm. and, and those kinds of things, or the, uh, the Japanese cartoons. Uh, we'll have a manga club you know, for them, and et cetera, et cetera. So there's so many ideas uh, that come up. And then once we get that uh, done, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll just put out the, the listing and have people react to it. So because of all the CPA, CPC funds and uh, and Representative Strauss adding to that and other donations that we've, yeah. uh, we've gained. So what will this Carriage House Cultural Center look like when it is completed? Well, uh, and I, I don't want to overlook the Mass Cultural Council yes, as well, Mass which Council, also yes. uh, on their uh, the facilities uh, part of their thing. They've, they've helped us quite a bit as well. But uh, yes, yeah, so well, we'll, it'll be uh, handicap accessible, obviously, and it'll be on one floor. And there'll be a reception area, a handicap bathroom, a full kitchen, and then two different classrooms with an accordion kind of slide that you can separate them into one smaller one and one larger one, or leave them both open. So that'll give us the capacity to have much uh, larger classes at a given time. Yeah, that'd be great. And that'll even increase more tourism for the New Bedford Fairhaven area I would because think so. people, you know, want to come here and see the Manjaro House. Mm -hmm. They hear yeah. the stories, the history. Yeah. You know how yeah. prevalent it is to have the first. Uh, Japanese uh, boy go to school here in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. Right. Um, but we also have an exhibit at the Whaling Museum also. Right, exactly. And we also made, uh, the intention is to make the cultural center available to other uh, nonprofits or other, uh, you know, people that want to have a particular uh, meeting or at some kind of a, 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 an event per se, and they would be able to use that as well. Of course, they, you know, given the fact that the Dr. Hino Hara, whose uh, picture is right there, uh, <laughs> donated it to the town. So this is all belonged to the town of Fairhaven and on the condition that our nonprofit operates it, which we've been doing for 11 years. Excellent. And you said that there may be uh, some things earmarked this year, uh, Representative Strauss, and our state government? So we're just uh, in the first few days of the new fiscal sure. year. <laughs> it's early. So uh, <laughs> shortly we'll be putting the, I'll call it the formal touches on uh, this coming fiscal year's uh, $25,000 earmark. So uh, I think all signs look pretty good. So uh, what that will allow is uh, the planning for the coming year of the kind of projects that Jerry has identified that are sure. you know, important to this uh, organization and, and the historic mission uh, uh, to be able to continue. So in the previous fiscal year, was it $25,000 also? I think it was, it's been $25,000. we are probably three years into it. Oh, wow. Uh, so this is nothing, this is something you've been doing on a, a continual oh, yeah. basis. Okay. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, shame on, shame on us, I guess, for not uh, tooting our own horns about the, this mm -hmm. funding. But uh, it's uh, the quiet work that uh, I know has been going on is, is why the, we were able to continue it for these last few years. Uh, and so the public should know that sure. there's great work yeah. going on here. Yeah, there is. And it's also good to know that it's coming to our community. You That's know, right. state monies are coming to our community for our projects that are really important in the South Coast area. Right. 
I think another aspect that I'd like to just make sure everyone is aware of, we had the wonderful luck and ability to, to make a, complete, a completed plan with New Bedford Vocational High School. Yes. And so for these last couple of months, we have had carpentry students, plumbing, uh, masonry, uh, air conditioning students come and work here uh, in that building and uh, is a great part of their thing. And uh, more than a year ago, the cupola on the top of that building was taken to Vocational High School, which is now being rebuilt, mm -hmm. including the weather vane of which we had an original picture. So the welding uh, department, I guess, there is now redoing that whole thing. And when it's ready, that'll be a great PR thing. We hope we all are going to be there at that time. Absolutely. Be, yes. so, and then the youngsters, as they get older themselves and bring their youngsters here, they said, we helped to rebuild that thing over there. And it's, uh, I think it's, it, it's very exciting for us to have those youngsters here. And, yes. and I can tell you, I think I mentioned to someone recently, I went out in the carpentry group were out there. They were building a wall on the floor, had all the power tools and everything else. And I think half of the group were all female, which were fantastic. They were all using the power saws and the power tools and, and a great program. And we, uh, we, we are very fortunate to have them with us. Very talented students coming out of Absolutely. vocational high school. Very, very talented. And we need them. <laughs> Amen. We definitely need them. Right. So uh, while I have you here, Representative Strauss, uh, any other uh, community uh, things that are happening in our community? I know recently the Mattapoise of Bike Path. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, that sure. success? Well, the, the path, which of course starts on the waterfront here in Fairhaven, uh, over the weekend picked up another three quarters of a mile of... Uh, some amazing landscape and stretch. So I've encouraged people to get out there. And what it is is the bridge crossing over the uh, Mattapoisett River and some unique marsh area with uh, habitat and birds uh, is now open as far as Reservation Road. And uh, I was out there with my daughter on uh, Friday Mm -hmm. And uh, we counted 12 turtles uh, under the, the overpass of the bridge that are there. And so one of the things about the bike path, as it's now uh, been extended and been open for years in Fairhaven, is it's about recreation. It's about alternative transportation. Uh, people can travel, uh, use it as uh, travel. One guy, I think he posted on, on Facebook this morning, he's uh, going to be able to uh, do his commute from, from where he lives into that part of Mattapoisett now. Uh, and so these bike paths really are, are broader than, than maybe people think of at, at first. Uh, special thanks, though, on this stretch goes to two organizations that donated the land oh. to make this uh, tremendous route uh, available. One is the YMCA. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the other is uh, the membership of the Reservation Golf Course. Uh, this new segment goes in between the two properties and both made donations. They didn't have to uh, and, uh, and they're, thereby uh, help the cost of the project by making the land that uh, is traveling, that people now travel through, uh, more, more available. And, uh, and the work on the path continues. The planning, uh, the state just granted a couple of weeks ago what's called a Mass Trails Grant for another 120000 to Great. do the planning on the next stretch that'll take us to the Marion Town Line. Oh, that's great. Uh, ultimately, this can connect to uh, the paths that reach out onto Cape Cod. So you could get on a bicycle or walk, uh, if you're really good, <laughs> uh, from the Fairhaven waterfront all the way uh, out to Cape Cod. That's the, the dream, ultimately, of this uh, connection for communities. Well, I know a lot of cyclists that are very, very uh, happy that it stretches out into Mattapoisett now. And I know when they hear this, they'll be even happier because that would be a great, great way of getting exercise, enjoying the beautiful nature that we have in this area, and um, in a safe way. Yeah. In a safe exactly. way. So any future projects? Be, be, I know the Cultural Center, the Carriage right. House, and, no. and Representative Strauch has said about people donating things. Imagine if Dr. Hinohara never donated, it didn't ever donate this. I mean, we're right. very blessed that people that make those kind of sizable donations to our community. Yes, and we're glad to see that uh, 
the Representative Strauss was able to join us at Ohanami on May 1st when we had our Cherry Blossom Festival yeah, here. That was a and, beautiful uh, day. We had a, a, a perfect day for it. We had people here from Japan mm -hmm. and from the uh, Kochi Kenjinkai. It's uh, in New York. It's a group of people who they get together all the time because they're from the same area in Kochi. So sure. it's like the, the, the hometown group. And several people from there came down to, as well. So it was, a, it was a great thing. It worked out well. Yeah. So what was that experience like you? You're a representative of us, you know, here in the uh, greater Fairhaven, Mattapoisett area, uh, New Bedford. And so what, what, is, what was it like for you? Do you meet so many different cultures, like the cultures from Japan, when you come and do an event here at the Manjura House? What is that like for you? Well, it's exciting because I think a lot of times people don't know about the connections that, that they might have uh, as they get to talk to people. And, and learn about them. And that, to me, is the, the, the hidden benefit of, of a, a place like this, is people find those connections, learn about each other. And uh, I, I know it sounds sappy, but uh, those are all good things to be happening these days. Yes, that is very, very true. Yeah, one other person I just would like to mention that was here that day, as a matter of fact, was a sixth generation descendant of Commodore, Commodore Matthew Perry, whose name is Matt Perry, and he was here as well with us celebrating from Maryland. Sure. Yeah, yeah. so uh, a yeah, great guy, and we'll see him. Um, the festival in Japan is taking place this year, the Manjaro Festival, in November. November and so uh, if COVID allows, we're sure. all going to go and uh, have a great time there. We'll have some representation, hopefully, from our, our community here. Exactly, yeah. We're counting on that. So, anything coming up in the next uh, few weeks and the beautiful part of the summer? Uh, I know you have some classes that are happening here. Right, we are, we are still teaching, as we mentioned before, uh, in two sections. Though we have a step one and a step two. Uh, the, later this month, the step one will take place, and it's uh, for local teachers who will get uh, certified and uh, with, with an additional contribution, they can get college credits for the work that they do here because our uh, Dr. Uh, Debbie Almeida, who sure. he heads all of our programs, has that connection and can make it happen. So she's uh, involved with doing that. And uh, so we'll have one part in July and the second part will take place in August. Excellent. And for happenings that are happening here at the Manjaro House, where can someone find out about that? On our website, uh, yeah. And uh, we try to also, I have a listing, uh, a distribution list on the computer uh, to people, all of our members who are actual members. We have about 132 members per se. And then we have another group called Our Friends who are all over the place. So sure. we kind of keep them uh, involved uh, by just giving the word out. I just sent to all of them the notice about the November Matsuri in uh, Tokyo, in, in Japan, and uh, see who's interested. And yes. so we get the feedback yes. from that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And Representative Strauss, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, um, if they have a community idea or they'd like your input on something, how could they get in touch with you? Well, I always tell them they call my house, 758-2347. Uh, okay. Um, likely they'll get the answering machine, but uh, people reach out sometimes, uh, in, in, or they call uh, 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 to the state house. And uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, but as I say, over the years, it's been those uh, locally uh, uh, thought of ideas that have led to so many things people see around the community. Well, as a representative uh, for the uh, Whitfield Manjaro House, I just want to say thank you because. It's contributions such as you're raising to make sure that this project takes off and our CPC funds from Fairhaven and the Massachusetts uh, Council, yeah, the Cultural Council. Cultural Council. I mean, it's, it's organizations that band together like this that's going to make this cultural center uh, come to fruition. And it's going to bring about so much more education, so much more, uh, you know, cultural awareness, right. you know, and for our great bond that we have with our sister city in uh, Toshimisha, Japan. So I uh, just want to thank you both for taking time out of your very, very busy schedules to come and share some good news with our community, um, which is what we're, the magazine is all about, sharing good news. So I appreciate both of you and just want to give you an opportunity if you have any final comments. No, it's just been my pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank well, you. And, and for anyone who would like to set up a visit to either the museum itself or the Mandro Trail, they can just look on our website and uh, they can send me an email, which I just got two of them today. Uh, and uh, the uh, Japanese people who are wanted to come and see. And I tell them, we'll, we'll show them 
where the area where Mondro and the captain shared time and space. Excellent. And also people can become a member. Absolutely. Yeah. So they can yeah. sign up for membership right then and there yeah, too. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we pass those out as people come through. Yeah. That's great. Well, this is a, a shining star for the New Bedford Fairhaven area. So uh, thank you, Jerry, and your wife, Ayako, and your board for continuing to keep on this mission and keep on this culture exchange. And, and thank you, Representative Strauss, for uh, making it financially happen in so many ways. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the magazine. In our previous segment, you heard about uh, pickleball being mentioned by Representative Strauss. So we're here today with Ken Patel on a pickleball court right here in beautiful Livesey Park. And welcome back, Ken. Thank you, uh, Charlie. Very good to be here. Yeah, so can you give us an update on what's happening with pickleball in Fairhaven? Yeah, I'll try to do it as quickly as I can. Um, we have, we started launching Monday a uh, partnership with the Fairhaven Recreation Department where we've uh, lined the courts at the gym and all they have, and we'll be uh, working with their older uh, youth who are there uh, during the summer. Okay. That's a new initiative. Uh, last weekend, we had our first annual Fave and Pickleball Round Robin, uh, which was well attended. Uh, 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 59 different players and 75 different uh, people, uh, people playing in different uh, uh, divisions. So that was our first. And our membership's grown. Uh, to, we're going to be uh, probably hitting 300 this year. Wow. Uh, we were 180 at the end of last year, or 184. So um, we and we uh, have a clinic this week, uh, a beginner's clinic at the fort, um, and that is full. Okay. And we'll be offering more clinics uh, in August. And uh, if anyone's interested in taking a beginner's clinic, it's ten dollars. Uh, you have to. <coughs> Contact us by BehavenPickleball at gmail.com and we'll give you the information and get you signed up. Well, I'm definitely going to be signing up because I've made the investment of Pickleball. Oh my gosh. And I have my own paddle. I and we am have the whole, very impressed. We have all the equipment, so I'm ready to go. And uh, I'm going to get a few friends out here. And so I'll be attending a clinic in August. Okay, uh, you're on. <laughs> Do you want me to sign you up now? Or you want me? You want to uh, send an email in? You can sign me up now. Okay, that's great. Right, I will contact you. I'll get you an email. Okay. So there's other things happening in Fairhaven with pickleball, though, that that are for the future. Oh yeah, we got uh, something that we're really excited about. Town meeting was very, very supportive, and your support and the town lead, all the town leaders, um, and we're going to have new courts right here at Lucy Park. We felt that this was a great location because this area, there's no pickleball courts on this side of Route 6. Okay. There's Cushman in the morning, four courts, there's a fort, and there's two private courts at West Island. And there's seven courts indoors uh, right there uh, off of Route, near Route 6. So this is a great location because this area of town should have courts. Because once you build them, they will come. And believe me, that will happen. We'll run clinics here. We'll have, we'll probably have our next year's tournament here. Oh, great! And we draw from all over for our tournament. That's great. And we yeah. have a new complex over here. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure some of the residents there would like to join in and yeah. play pickleball. And we also got, are very much in tune trying to develop a youth program. So we'll be. That's one thing we're going to be really focusing on because this is a sport that can really resonate with young people. Matter of fact, some of the winners of the tournament were in their 20s. Oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah, so they're, they're really good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it appeals to all ages, really. And was that just Fairhaven residents, or was it people from no, it was all, all over? No, you had to belong to the Fairhaven Pickleball Association. Okay. All right. So people joined just to be in the tournament uh -huh. uh, from outside of Fairhaven. But they come here and they spend their money. They yeah. go to our restaurants, they buy, go to our stores, they go to the gas station. Good. So it's not a bad thing. Not at all. And it's... Uh, and they don't take up in my many city or town services, which, you know. So can, can you briefly describe, like, how do you play pickleball? Uh, it's, a very, it's probably one of the easiest sports to learn because after one or two clinics, you'll, you'll be playing. Okay. And you can't say that about most sports. I don't know if there's a sport you could say that about. Uh, and you can, ha you can have almost instantly, you can have fun. Um, and, I, and I'm talking about if you're a senior like myself, uh, if you're someone the uh, age of my daughter, who's 29, who was 
number one on the South Coast when she was playing tennis, and now all she does is play pickleball. So if you're athletic, uh, or if you're a uh, senior, or if you're a beginner, never played a sport, and, it, and we have all that with our almost 300 members. So, uh, and then people find, we have different times for people in different groups, uh, and then we have times when everybody can, anyone can come play in the mix. So that's worked out well with the scheduling, because we have Crispin courts in the morning, and we've been able to use those courts a lot. Like today, there was almost 20 people there playing. Sure. And then you saw, you were down at the court, and you saw people playing in the afternoon. That's our advanced group. They play Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the afternoon at 12 o'clock. Yes. So yeah. they don't have to play. They, a lot of them don't want to play with the people, intermediate players. Uh, uh, so we, we, uh, they asked for a time. I said, yeah, no one, no one likes to play in the heat of the day. So, you know, if you guys want to play at 12, that's fine. Yeah, so, it was full. It yeah. was full down there. Yeah. And also the advance, they're really good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you watched them at all. I did. I watched them. I was, I was, uh, I was really intrigued yeah. and I got to see them play and yeah. I was like, wow, this, this, it looks like they were having a lot of fun too. Oh yeah, yeah. It's addicting. I'm going to tell you right now, my wife's addicted. I'm addicted. My daughter's addicted. So yeah, it's, it's really uh, amazing. So the future is definitely bright for pickleball. I know we did a show on it a few uh, months ago, yeah. and uh, it was just really starting out and starting to get really popular. Right. And now it's 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 taken off. Well, it's taken off in Fairhaven, and it's starting to trickle out to the other communities. Um, I got a call from the uh, Marion Recreation Director, and uh, they've told him money's no object. Build the courts. Wow. Um, and uh, they just put four brand new courts in Fall River. Uh, and you got to have dedicated courts. You can't have people saying, bring your own nets and set them up. I sure. mean, that's, that doesn't work. I like to do Bedford. That's what they're doing right now. Right, right. Um, but but it, uh, Fairhaven's having a real imp starting to have a real impact on the whole area, really. Uh, which is great. Yes. You know, we're, we've become the, 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 as the Standard Times said in one of the articles, the epicenter of uh, pickleball on the South Coast. So we're proud of that. Yeah, well, thank you for bringing it to Fairhaven and, and being, you know, the founder, I guess, of Pickleball. Well, well not me. It's a whole <laughs> lot of people, really. It really is. Have we have team. a court committee that works on okay. the court design, and they're really good with the technical stuff. We have a tournament committee. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on all the committees, but I'm not the one sharing a lot of them. Uh, we have a board of directors. We have a social committee, parents, all our socials, our oh, pizza wow. party, our picnics, our uh, brunch on court side, which is coming up. Okay. So we have a pizza party next week, and uh, so we have a lot of different things, a lot of committees doing different things oh, that make great. it so really great, really. And it's you really make it also great. social. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a social. It is the so most social sport I can think of, and I've played a lot of sports, and it it just lends itself to that because sure. you, games of 15 minutes, you sit down, you talk to people, then you go back out. Uh, so it's 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 amazing sport really, because uh, who, who who can say that a 15 year old and a 90 year old can play a sport? Exactly. You yes. know. Yeah. So who could say a parent and their kids can go out there and play together? Excellent. Yeah. So we're we're excited. We have we have a lot a lot of future plans. Next next year we hope to march in the parade. Oh great. So we yeah. want to have a little net and be pick be. We're going to pick up to music as we walk down the, uh, the road, and we want to have a booth at homecoming. Excellent. Well, Ken, I can't thank you enough for all you do for our community and for bringing this great sport you know, here and promoting it uh, here on the magazine. And if someone wants to get involved again, what do they go to? What website? It's uh, they actually they email us. They, we do have a website, but uh, it's best to email fairhavenpickleball at gmail.com. Well, excellent. Yeah. Well, we're going to have that on the screen, too. So uh, thanks, Ken, and thanks for your dedication. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. Thank you very much.